do you want to work for Canonical? Well, now you can, because right now they are hiring a Linux desktop gaming product manager. Now you might be thinking, wait, Canonical and gaming. Better yet, Canonical caring about the Linux desktop altogether. Maybe at one point when you thought about gaming on Linux, Ubuntu was the first thing you thought about. And sure, it is still the biggest thing on the Steam hardware survey under Linux category, but I think that goes more to the fact that Ubuntu is such a big distro, not that people choose Ubuntu to actually do gaming. Because when you hear about the distros that people recommend for gaming, it'll be things like PopOS, obviously based on Ubuntu, but it isn't Ubuntu itself. You'll hear about Manjaro. Maybe you'll hear about Linux Mint, but I hear about Arch Linux, way more often in a gaming context than I hear about Mint. But even though SteamOS 3 being used on the Steam Deck is Arch based, I still never expected Arch to be such a big contender on this list, only just behind the second spot. So I'm gonna guess, but I feel like it's a pretty good guess, that most people who care about Linux gaming know that you can game on Ubuntu, it's just not part of the Linux gaming discussion. But I guess 2022 is the year that Canonical is going to have a renewed focus in Linux gaming. Just back at the end of November last year, their current desktop product manager put out this article about how to actually game on Ubuntu, the different options that are available, whether you want to do stuff through Steam Play or Native, how to actually set stuff up. I've read through this article, and sure, there are points that could certainly be added to it, but overall, it does a pretty good job. And then the article ends in a really interesting way. But we don't want to get complacent. We know there is still a lot more we can do to improve the game experience on Ubuntu desktop. We're keen to hear from you on the issues or areas we should focus on in 2022. So I guess their first public step then would be filling this position. So let's go and take a look. We work with partners in the silicon world to ensure the latest graphics drivers and tweaks are built in for optimal frame rates and latency as well as with partners in the gaming industry to ensure that mechanisms such as anti-cheat capabilities are available to ensure fairness and product availability. You will define product strategy as well as drive engagement and adoption. The role requires an analytical storyteller with a strong sense of message and a deep understanding of Linux graphics, gaming, and desktop technologies and communities. Now, being a job application like most of them out there, it's fairly vague, but I'll do the best I can. So lead desktop graphics choices in Ubuntu. Now I don't think this is just related to whether, oh we should ship with Wayland or we should ship with Xorg. Because there is such a mention of graphics drivers and graphics silicon, I think this may also relate to how drivers are actually handled in Ubuntu. Let's say what version Ubuntu actually ships with, but maybe deciding on whether Ubuntu should go with a more Pop West style model where it has basically a rolling release for those drivers, meaning that you always have the most up to date drivers available. The next point once again mentions Graphic Silicon as well, so drive partnerships in the Graphic Silicon, desktop, and gaming spheres. While it's no secret that companies like Valve care about Linux gaming and care about the Linux desktop, other big gaming companies like Ubisoft, Epic, EA, Rockstar, Blizzard, not so much. Epic is a weird one though. Because when the Steam Deck was announced, Tim Sweeney specifically said that the Steam Deck was an amazing move by Valve. But we've seen nothing about a native client. Maybe, you know, integrating Proton into it. Something like that would be great, possibly. But even though Valve does care about that, I can't imagine they have a very favourable relationship with Ubuntu and Canonical after a few years back when they were considering dropping 32-bit support, which basically is required by Steam. So I'm sure this gaming product manager would be involved in rebuilding those relationships, building them where they don't exist, and then making sure they remain healthy. Next is telling the story of Ubuntu for gamers. Now I think the most obvious way to interpret this is handling blog posts like this, actually having discussion about gaming on Linux coming directly from Canonical. Because it's all well and good to allow the community to go and say, oh, this is what you should do, this is what you should do, that is what you should do. But if the companies actually supporting these distros come out and say, yeah, we actually want to support this, you're going to have more people actually considering it. And then lastly, lead engineering design and development. Now, I feel like there's supposed to be a comma in here somewhere, but I'm just going to take it as it is. So outside of being involved in the way the new versions of Ubuntu are actually structured, 
I'm not really sure what this could possibly mean. I saw some people on Reddit sort of speculating with no source outside of literally this line right here that Canonical would try to do something like the, the Windows App Store and basically start distributing games as snaps. I don't think even Canonical would be crazy enough to do that, but maybe they would be. As for the job requirements, they're basically what you'd expect from a management position, with the exception of a few of them. Things like, oh, you have hands-on experience in Linux and gaming tech stacks. You have a curious and analytical mind. Oh, you have business and commercial interests. You have proven leadership and presentation skills. You have interest in the field. Like, basic stuff. But the weird one is at least three years of software engineering experience. Now, judging by the roles that were mentioned earlier, I really don't know why that's included. I don't know why you need someone with actual software engineering experience to fill this position. Maybe there's something not listed here, or I'm not interpreting something correctly, where that would actually make sense. But I'm certainly not seeing it. Also, it says at least three years of software engineering experience, and then also a technical or science background. Isn't a... This right here, going to give you this. So like, that's kind of redundant, but whatever. Obviously, it's someone in the HR department who wrote this, so I wouldn't really put too much weight in the requirements that are listed here. One thing that does bother me about every single job that does this is we offer a competitive salary. And don't say the salary literally anywhere on the page. So it's competitive. I don't know what it's competitive with though, maybe McDonald's, maybe a software engineer, I got no idea. But hopefully whoever fills this position does a good job with it, and Ubuntu actually picks up steam in the gaming space. I don't run Ubuntu myself, but I think more people who are advocating for Linux gaming and trying to communicate with these companies and get stuff actually supported on Linux is always going to be a good thing. Obviously, Arch-based systems are picking up a lot of steam, but a lot of these changes that happen on Ubuntu are going to be changes that happen everywhere. If NVIDIA actually goes and supports the Novo drivers and makes the open source drivers the primary drivers, that's good for everyone. If we have better support for hardware, if we have, you know, better support from gaming companies, all of this stuff is better for everyone, not just Ubuntu. So if you think you have the skills to fill this position, I'll leave it linked in the description down below. And if you happen to get the job after watching this video, I don't know, leave a comment down below and I will take credit for it or something. I don't know. Just leave a comment down below if you happen to get the job. That'd be really, really cool. This also may just be a position where it looks like Canonical is doing something, but in reality, they're not going to be given the resources they need to actually do their job. Hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully this is an actual position that Canonical really cares about, but we'll have to see what actually happens. So that's going to be it for me. If you like this video, remember to go and like it. And if you really like this video and you want to support my channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon subscribers, Johnny Berope, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Bro Drops and Plays. All that's down there below as well. And that's going to be it for me. So, I'm out.